Hey everypony, I'm Dulcet Tone, the Pony of Harmonics, and welcome to a rather special kind of video. I suppose you could call it a commentary video, but I'd rather call it an analysis and response video. Brony Notion just recently put out a detailed and comprehensive new theory video about alicorns. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have a great respect for Notion, as he's one of my inspirations for my channel in the first place, and he's opened up his video for deep discussion. As his theory videos have been very few and far between recently, I consider this one to be a gift, and accordingly, I'm going to go through it and give my thoughts and opinions on what he has to say. Let's begin! Since you're watching this video, chances are you've also seen this one. Arthur Other Alicorns has over one and a half million views now, which is absolutely mind-numbingly incredible. Not to sound ungrateful, but I'm not sure if that's entirely a good thing. In that video, I made a confident claim that Celestia and Luna were born alicorns. I noticed you used a tweet from Lauren Faust in that video clip just now. I'll be coming back to this later, I just wanted to point it out. I also said there were only four alicorn princesses. Yeah. Well, both of those statements are wrong now, and I've been getting hundreds of comments that all basically say the same thing. You forgot Flurry uh, Heart. Flurry Heart is now the bat. Uh, you forgot Flurry. I feel your pain, Notion. This is going out to all the viewers out there, but before you post comments, check the date of the video. If it's an old piece and you're trying to add some new information to the table, ask his thoughts on the subject. Don't outcry. You're wrong. The first chance you get. Especially considering he wasn't when the video was originally released. That's like asking Season 1 Fluttershy to kick Angel Bunny out of the house, and when she didn't, yelling at her because she did so with Zephyr in Season 6. Consider the time frame. If this was the first baby born to an alicorn mother, they would have simply made the connection, called it genetics, and moved on. We know Equestria has a basic understanding of genetics. Baby Cakes isn't exactly a good episode to admit they know about genetics. Honestly, their knowledge of genetics is rather rudimentary at best, and sounded like an excuse to explain things away with lazy writing. The birth of an alicorn is something Equestria has never seen. The latter is quite a sweeping statement for a sample space of five. This convinces me that there have been other alicorns. This would be a good assumption, if it weren't for the fact that Celestia's credibility isn't exactly the best. I've pointed out in my Cadence Pregnancy video that Celestia has lied before to Twilight's face, and honestly, any ruler or politician has to have that ability to spin lies as the truth. Considering that they had known about Twilight coming, and were there long before, they could have spun together a story before they arrived. I'm not saying your ideas are wrong here, I'm saying that Celestia isn't necessarily right. Before Season 6, I always assumed that Princess Celestia and Princess Luna came from an ancient alicorn civilization, some great land outside of Equestria. They definitely seem to have come from somewhere else when they stopped Discord's reign and started their own. I never really understood your logic on this one. Why is it that Discord had reigned first before Celestia and Luna? Discord has been known to change the landscape in an instant. Without the elements of harmony to control him, and knowing that not even alicorn magic can stop him, he could easily have swept the metaphorical rug out from under the princesses, who were already ruling. Their battered and bruised bodies in this scene show only that they went on a grueling journey, likely to gather the elements of harmony in the first place. So no, I can't agree with where you're coming from with this. If Celestia and Luna had to earn being an alicorn, then it would be easy to assume that they were taught by mentors, just like how they taught Twilight and Cadence. You could also assume that their mentors were taught by mentors as well. This idea indicates a generational model, a smattering of mentors and their protégés, like a magical baton being passed from generation of alicorn to generation. Though this does seem to be where Starlight fits in- Hold up, when did we start talking about Starlight? You hadn't mentioned her at all in the past four minutes of your video, and then you suddenly throw her in like she's supposed to be there? But ignoring her, I agree with this generational model. Celestia has been searching for the right protege for some time now. Cadence, Sunset Shimmer, and Twilight all have had this treatment. However, Cadence and Sunset eventually had differing destinies. The explanation didn't really satisfy me. Think of all the questions that still remain under this assumption. Why do the royal sisters have flowing hair while Twilight and Cadence don't? Twilight's Kingdom Part 2. Twilight shows two instances of having a flowing mane after she takes Celestia and Luna's magic, and when she channels that into moving the sun and moon. In addition, in the same scene, the sisters' hair stops flowing. This is tied to the content of their magic and not their genetics. Even if it was genetic, then Twilight holds the same genetic markers that allow for flowing manes. She just doesn't have enough power to make it work yet, as she still is maturing. 
Before Flurry Heart came into the mix, most of us were convinced that Celestia and Luna were born alicorns and to alicorn parents. However, we can't hold this to be true anymore without calling Celestia and Luna flat out liars. I don't know about Luna, but I can call Celestia that easily. Flurry Heart, Verdi makes a comment about how she thought alicorn wings had to be earned, and the others voice the same confusion. Some people use this as evidence towards the theory that Pegasi can't become alicorns, and that, unlike the Crystal Heart spell, Cadence actually started off as a unicorn. Rarity's line doesn't necessarily mean that all alicorns started out as unicorns. She's just going off of the transformation most familiar to her, Twilight's. Directly after, Celestia and Luna never confirm or deny this, but I still think Cadence was originally a Pegasus. It's been shown that you can contain and even manipulate magic without a horn, so it still works. Heck, some alicorns may have even started off as earth ponies. Correct. Many people forget that an alicorn is the combination of three races, not two. Earth pony, Pegasus, and unicorn. When you think about it that way, then the transfiguration into an alicorn is much more jarring. It's not just gaining an extremity, but also the internal abilities of an earth pony, which we don't have a real anatomy lesson on. Going back to Faust's tweet, the show staff has taken great lengths to separate themselves from Faust's canon interpretation, and replace it with their own after season 2. Amy Keating Rogers and Megan McCarthy were more open to her interpretation with the Journal of the Two Sisters. However, Josh Haber disagrees, and has tried desperately to separate himself and the series from that canon by introducing this little enigma, and deconfirming that specific book. In addition, G.M. Barrow's novels have been recognized in canon by mentioning the Ponypalooza Rock concert in the main attraction, an episode written by Amy Keating Rogers, not G.M. Barrow. This means that Cadence's origins in that book series is canon as well. She was a Pegasus that gained Alicorn status. Uh, also, I saw that Microsoft joke. Bad notion. Shame on you. Each one of them will become an alicorn. It's just part of their biology. They don't need other ponies to do the transformation for them. It just happens naturally, like a cutie mark. On the other hoof, your typical equestrian pony just doesn't have what it takes. In your dreams. Even equestrian ponies with a lot of magic still won't turn into an alicorn without intervention. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> you're, you're claiming Celestia intervened with Twilight's development so she could become an alicorn? Just what exactly did she do? She's one of the most hands-off mentors ever. In addition, the magic Twilight created that triggered her transformation was from Star Swirl's book, an extremely powerful unicorn, not an alicorn. From what I'm seeing here, there's no intervention. On top of that, you're neglecting Cadence's canon, in which she was found pre-transformed by Celestia in the alicorn dimension. For example, why did Celestia and Luna leave the alicorn civilization in the first place? Also, what was the purpose of turning Twilight and Cadence into alicorns? I'm going to explain with a story. This is where equestrian history comes in, and I have to admit, this is more like a headcanon or a fanfiction than it is anything else. It's kinda already been in that territory for a while now. But hey, my theory show is called Headcanon, so go for it. A long time ago, there lived a great alicorn civilization. The civilization never interacted with Equestria and its inhabitants. They didn't have a reason to. In Equestria's early days, there was little technology, the three tribes never got along, and the quality of life was just bad. So the civilization remained uninvolved and indifferent. But that all changed with Discord. Using Equestria as a foot in the door, Discord put the alicorn civilization at stake. Because of this, two alicorns were sent to restore the peace and to make sure it didn't go away. This is why Celestia and Luna left their home, to help Equestria get back on its hoofs. But as we know, peace didn't last as long as Celestia had hoped. Luna's rebellion kept both of them from returning to their home, for what Celestia knew would be at least a thousand years. After Nightmare Moon was banished, there were now two problems standing between the royal sisters and their home. Equestria had become dependent on the alicorn rulership, so even if Luna was back, they could never justify leaving. That's when Celestia had an idea. The ponies in Equestria were nowhere as magically capable as the alicorns, but there were some very powerful ponies. So Celestia founded her school for talented unicorns. Centuries of searching for a worthy replacement ultimately yielded no success. There were some promising candidates, but no one quite met the mark. Something was missing. Enter the main six. Twilight Sparkle had shown promise just like many before her, but this was different. In a wondrous feat of harmony and magic, the main six brought back Celestia's sister. Twilight Sparkle was the one she had been looking for, a powerful pony with five close friends to fall back on. Celestia could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. But even with Luna back, the initial problem still remained. Equestria still needed them. So Celestia brought Twilight up under her wing, preparing her to be an alicorn herself. She knew an alicorn leader would be revered in many ways a unicorn leader just wouldn't be. This was to ensure loyalty from all ponies of Equestria. Throughout the next few years, more trouble came Equestria's way. With each consecutive disaster, the main six became more and more capable, and the royal sisters became less and less necessary. Equestria was finally becoming independent, and the princesses could soon return home. And that brings us to the present. The main six not only protect from disaster, but promote well-being and harmony, everything you need in a government. The royal sisters are almost free to go home, back to the alicorn civilization, to their parents, possible siblings, maybe even children. We don't know anything about Celestia and Luna's life before they ruled Equestria, but I think the story matches up with the facts pretty well. Putting aside my logical bias about the whole Discord thing, this honestly sounds pretty viable, if it weren't for the fact that Twilight hasn't been learning anything from Celestia regarding rulership. 
Cadence is more the ruling type, as we see that she did get proper governmental training so she could rule the Crystal Empire. Even so far back as Twilight's Kingdom, we see her being slighted when it comes to governmental roles, and she was never coached on raising the sun or moon, so she had to do it on the fly. Speaking of which, that still leaves the sun and moon an issue in the first place. Celestia and Luna have the power to manipulate both the sun and moon by themselves, and Twilight gained that strength when she absorbed their power and triggered her flowing mane. Would Celestia and Luna leaving mean that they would have to pass the reins down to one of them? If that's the case, then neither of them are even close to be ready to take that job yet, and both of them would have to be ready just in case something happened to one or the other. And that brings up another point. If Celestia and Luna came from the Alicorn Lands to lead Equestria, does that mean they're affected by the phases of the Sun and Moon too? Or do they live in a place where that doesn't matter? Cross dimension or off world, that wouldn't matter. But if they're still on the same planet, then it would. It's possible that Celestia and Luna are also the most powerful Alicorns of the lands to begin with. So where does this theory put our two newest characters, Starlight and Flurryheart? Again with Starlight? At the very least put her name in the title if you're gonna focus on her out of the blue. ...to Twilight and her friends, because something very important has yet to be done. A big part of ruling Equestria is finding a successor. Celestia and Luna don't just need a successor, but a successor for their successor. If they were to leave Twilight in charge right now, with little ability to recognize good leadership, there would only be order as long as Twilight ruled. By the time she inevitably steps down, Equestria will fall back into disorder and require assistance once again. Twilight still needs to learn how to do what Celestia has been doing for centuries. Of which not a single iota has been taught ends her rule. Since Starlight is roughly the same age as Twilight, I doubt she'll be replacing her, but she is good practice for the real deal. Well, you know what they say, teach a pony to rule Equestria, and Equestria will be ruled for a lifetime. But teach a pony to teach a pony to rule Equestria, and Equestria will be ruled forever. That was a mouthful. On the question of whether or not she'll become an Alicorn, I think yes. She has the magical potential, and I wouldn't put giving Starlight wings beyond Twilight's ability. You're again assuming that Celestia gave Twilight her wings. Personally, I think she's just standing there watching the transformation, which she didn't get to see with Cadence. Also, Starlight gaining wings? No, I don't see that. Mainly because of one thing, Star Swirl. At no point do we see Star Whirl ascending in any of the accepted lore, yet he clearly has magical potential rivaling or even surpassing Celestia. Starlight also seems to have a latent understanding of his spells. I would call Starlight his successor, not Twilight's. In addition, Starlight might not be the best to consider in a leadership role. Just saying. Even though Malarson seems to be done with the show. Unconfirmed, thank you. I think another Alicorn is still a possibility. And her name is Skyla. You know, the actual demon baby of the fandom. Remember when I said that no one in the Alicorn civilization has ever given birth to an Alicorn? Well, Cadence isn't from the Alicorn civilization. These are two entirely different types of Alicorns. Of course childbirth wouldn't work the same way. Like I said, Cadence's biology changed when she became an Alicorn, and it looks like that spread to her genes. That's right, Cadence's baby is every part as artificial as she is. Unlike the civilization ponies, Flurry Heart is not a true Alicorn. Here we go, the big claim. For starters, I don't agree with the naming conventions of artificial and true Alicorn. We really have no right to determine which is true and which is fake in this scenario. Remember, in the same scenario, artificial alicorns gain their wings and horn just like true alicorns do. You claim artificial ones require intervention, but I just disproved that. It could be just as natural. That's why she didn't have to earn her wings. They were inherited from her mother's artificial genetics. This is something that might not have happened if Cadence became an alicorn naturally, like the royal sisters. Now, we don't know this for sure, but there are two firsts going on here. The first artificial alicorn to give birth, and the first baby born as an alicorn. We only changed one major variable and got a different result. Of course, correlation doesn't imply causality, but I'm pretty confident that there is a connection. If that's where you want to go with it, that's fine. Your theory is your own and you have every right to it. And considering you asked for it, and because it's honestly an overdue video on my channel, here's my theory about why Flurry Heart is an alicorn. The three pony races, Earth Pony, Unicorn, and Pegasus, all have inherent traits that they are born with and manifest physically. These genetic traits are passed down through generations. However, these traits can be added and removed without messing with their DNA or causing major harm to the ponies. We see this when Discord removes their wings and horns. 
We also see that their magic manifests in their cutie mark, and all three pony races have magic taken away from them by Tyrek. Unicorn first, then Pegasus flight magic, and Earth Pony... whatever they have. Though this weakens them, they still remain alive. We also see that when the Royal Sisters cutie marks are removed, their main stop flowing. So this is also a magical, physically manifested trait. Alicorns, when transforming, gain the physical traits and abilities of the other two races they're lacking without drastically changing their physical makeup. But we also see that their magical potential is raised exponentially. Considering that Twilight went toe-to-toe -to -toe with T-Rex, four Alicorns of Magic versus all the ponies of Questria and Discord. So let's ask this question. What if these additional traits aren't genetic, but magical in nature? This would make Cadence's horn and Twilight's wings be a physical change for her to channel her magical potential. Another stage of that would be the flowing mane, which Twilight does obtain temporarily. Now let's look at this brat, I, I mean baby. Using the Cake Twins as a comparison, we see she has far larger wings and horn than the twins. And as this baby is only a few days old and can fly and shoot magic on par with a DBZ character, she's got insane magical potential, which has to manifest in the huge horn and wings to remain stable. So let's rephrase the initial question of why was Flurry born an Alicorn? The better question would be, was Flurry conceived an Alicorn? By Notion's logic and Celestia's statement, the answer should be no. Cadence was originally a Pegasus, then ascended into an Alicorn. Shining Armor is an extremely powerful unicorn. By genetics alone, Flurry should have been one or the other when she was conceived. With Celestia and Luna being confused, this means that they either have never birthed natural Alicorns, or have never given birth at all. And that leads me into my next point. Princess Cadence is my best princess, because I find her to be the most relatable character on the show. Whenever a major life event happens, it happens to her. There are a number of children out there who dream of being princes and princesses, getting married, having kids, getting the job of their dreams. All of these things have happened to Cadence, every major life event. She's become a princess, she's gotten married, she's gotten one of the best jobs in the land, and now she's had a baby. But relatable life events don't always mean happiness. She's also gone through one of the hardest trials a woman can go through. Miscarriage. From their marriage in Season 2 until Season 5, I don't doubt that Cadence and Shining Armor were trying to have a baby. Cadence was a foal sitter for many years, and it would make a lot of sense that one of the first things she and Shining would have breached was having children. Even if they waited until Cadence was crowned in the Crystal Empire, that's still a large gap of time where they've remained childless. As I've said before, Celestia and Luna have either never birthed Alicorns, or have never given birth at all. Personally, I think the latter statement may be more true. Let's assume for a second that Notion's theory about successors is correct. Cadence and Sunset Shimmer did not work out as candidates for her successor. The logical step would be to birth a successor, and yet through the thousands of years she's been alive, there has been no indication of such, and there's a reason for that. An Alicorn's genetic makeup allows for the foal to have extreme magical potential, a potential that can only be sustained in an Alicorn's physical body. Since most alicorns ascend during their young or adult life, their magical potential grows while they're mature enough to take it. As a fetus, this magical potential overwhelms and destroys its body, causing the mother to lose the baby because they can't perform the magic needed to ascend. In my Cadence pregnancy video, I stated that alicorn pregnancies were likely very difficult, and the Maritonians were the ones that had the best methods to maintain them. Considering we have no idea where Maritonia is, this may be the Alicorn Lands Notion is speaking of. By seeking their help, then this means that likely before Twilight's Kingdom, Cadence had miscarried at least once. However, she miscarried a second time, when she gave her magic to Twilight. At that point, both she and Shining Armor were out of magic. No matter what spell she was using inside her womb, she wouldn't have been able to cast it anymore, and the foal went silent within her. She goes quiet throughout the rest of the episode, empty and emotionless in her reflection, knowing that she sacrificed her own baby for the sake of the world. The third time was the best chance she had, when she had enough confidence to tell Twilight that she was pregnant. She was getting much more help from the Maritonians this time than previous, but something unexpected happened off screen, likely after the one where Pinkie Pie knows, that caused her to start losing the baby again. But this time, something changed. Flurryheart did something wonderful, 
something magical, something miraculous. Against all odds, this little unicorn fetus survived, and in doing so, she ascended in utero, gaining the genetic makeup she needed to sustain her awesome power without destroying herself. This is why Flurry came out with giant wings and a giant horn. And also, Cadence, you may be my favorite, but either she teleported her way out of you, or... well, loose lip sync ships, and I'll leave it at that. The reason Flurry Heart came out as an alicorn is because she ascended in the womb when her life was threatened by her own magical potential. Anyway, back to Notion's video. Anyway, whether you agree with me or not, you can't deny that Flurry Face here is special. I agree wholeheartedly. My guess is she'll end up being some sort of chosen one in an upcoming story arc. I also think magically she'll surpass the skills of Twilight. She might even be Twilight's replacement. I could see this happening, yes. But what happened to the whole succession thing being wrong at the beginning of the video? I've covered a lot of ground in this video. Like, a lot. So naturally, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Do you agree? Disagree? Why or why not? Can you expand on these theories, including other elements from the show? Beyond what I've said here so far, yes. We've seen that Celestia is the one actively looking for a successor, but why haven't we seen Luna doing this? If both sisters will eventually leave together, you would think she'd be even more focused finding a successor, or even giving birth to one herself. But that's not what we see. She was willing to go to the Crystal Empire and deal with Sombra herself, likely because she had the confidence in her own power, instead of concentrating on the succession. We also know that it does not take two alicorns to raise the sun and moon, just one. So I have a question for you, Notion. Could it be that Celestia was training Twilight to be Luna's successor, and then it will fall to Luna to train Flurry to be Twilight's successor, or to find another to train? I've got a lot of thoughts similar to this that I'd be honored to talk with you about, on or off the record. Maybe we could even make a debate about it. I do love a good friendly argument. To recap, I do like the originality of Notion's ideas. However, I feel they're missing a few elements that change the end result. I decided to make this video as a response to one of my inspirations in the community. Not to flame or cause drama, but to allow for my genuine thoughts to shine through. For those of you watching this video, please feel free to let me know what you think of my stance on Notion's theories, and my explanation for Flurry's existence. But please try to keep it civil. I'm Dulcetto, and always keep theorizing. You just might wind up right. Thanks for watching, and bro hoof!